Good? Yep. All right, so I was watching TV, and then I just had this brilliant idea. I was like, yo, Case Beer, what are you doing? Just reading. Okay, cool, but do you want to make a tutorial? Let's do it. Jeremy Case Beer is my roommate, like, and we haven't made it a tutorial in forever, so might as well make five tips to jump serving with Jeremy Casebeer. He was the best server in 2016, 2019. There might have been another year, but we don't really remember it. And so what better person to teach me how to jump serve in all of you than Jeremy Casebeer. Let's do it. So in college, I <coughs> sucked at jump serving, but my first summer when I was playing in Australia, I just decided I'm gonna jump serve every day. And these are the top five things that helped me that I wish I knew earlier in my career. So step number one is toss right, step right. And those are for the right-handed players. All of us lefties get left out in these videos consistently. So it's just the opposite. Deservedly you, so. You guys get it. There's only a few of us. We get no love. So when I'm tossing right and stepping right, I also keep a lower toss. I used to have kind of an indoor approach where I toss at super high weight, but it's really inconsistent. Three or four years ago in Rio, I figured that out. Thank you, Andrew Fuller. And it made a radical difference in my game. It was just way more consistent, easier to track. So when you toss right, step right, it's way easier and more consistent to get the ball in your sweet spot. That's not straight up and down or behind you. It's not to left or too far to the right. It's slightly in front of your shoulder. So from there, you're using your core, hips, shoulders, your whole body and momentum jumping into the court to hit the ball versus contacting it behind you and putting a lot of stress on your shoulder. Step number two, contact the ball in your sweet spot. If I could give one tip to any volleyball player that took me way too long to figure out, it's to avoid contacting the ball anywhere to the left. If you miss, always miss to the right. So that's why we toss right, step right. So the easiest way to check if you're contacting the ball in your sweet spot is to put it on the net. This is ideal. So that's contacting the ball in your sweet spot. That's where you can be an athlete and actually score points. Off to the right is plan B. That's where we still have range and options but we're slightly limited. If we miss, that's where we want to miss. That's ideal again, right where you want to contact, where you're using your whole body to serve the ball and your momentum. Off to your left, that's the doo-doo ball. That's what you want to avoid. If there's one thing I wish I learned earlier in my career and one thing I could like help anyone with, it's avoiding contacting the ball to your left when you're serving or hitting. So another thing with finding that sweet spot is also having a tall posture. I think sure. too many players from an indoor they broad jump too much, you broad jump too much, you lose that height, you lose that contact, you hit it here. But you don't want to be too far in front because then you'll obviously hit in the net, but you also don't want to be back behind you. When you're back behind you, you lose all the momentum and power. If you're back behind you, you're also likely to hit it out. So somewhere right in between, just slightly in front. So at like 11 o'clock? Yeah. Depending on which way you're I looking know. at the clock. So yeah. it could be one o'clock too. <laughs> Aside so we can actually see the clock hand because what you're doing, is okay. It, is impossible okay. To see. Ready? Go like this. Ready? All right. Riley's making me redo this because he's behind the camera. It's a good call, but like this. That's eleven o'clock. There we go. Just so you know. Yeah, that's eleven o'clock, but it depends on which way you're looking from right. the clock. Could also be one thirty. The person who's watching the video, that's eleven. I'm just telling you. Okay, but if anyone's watching from that way, it's one o'clock. Why don't you just say slightly in front? <laughs> slightly in front of your shoulder. Uh, I think I, it's more like ten forty-five. <laughs> so like. So like this? <laughs> if you're not a very good tosser like myself, and you toss it to your off shoulder, for you it's the left, yep. what can I do to re-correct that? So if you have a bad toss, just like if you have a bad set, it's just more work to get a good attack. So if you toss left, all you need to do is step left, but as a right-hander, that's pretty goofy. It's uncomfortable. If I do toss my left, it's still possible to get a good serve in, it's just more work. That's when you kind of think yellow light. It's more work, you gotta get your feet there and you're more conservative and just trying to keep it in. I'm really happy you said that because that actually leads us into our third tip, which yeah. is fast feet, especially like a quick and explosive step close. Another thing that took me way too long to figure out is just trying to be smooth when you're jump serving, not trying to meet head every ball and just take a huge rip. So if you toss the ball and you have a light and quick step close and a smooth arm swing, then you're gonna be way more successful. It's way more consistent. So the biggest difference in my serving game is when I was able to serve consistently. It's great if you can hit an ace and whatnot, but if you don't do it consistently, it doesn't really matter. You lose games missing serves. So a lower toss and light and quick feet with a smooth arm swing made all the difference for me. So it's just like any other sport. If you're golfing or trying to hit a home run, if you muscle up on it, your consistency is going to be really low. 
If you're just taking a 70% swing with 100, 110% feet, you'll speed up your kinetic chain and everything moves together. That's how you put yourself in rhythm. Quick feet will speed up your arm and if you're contacting out in front versus behind you, then you're gonna have a lot of power behind the ball. For the people at home, do you have a sort of mental cue or what, what has sure, helped sure. you to, to have quick feet? So whenever I'm going back to serve, all I think about is light and quick. When I have really quick feet and a smooth arm, 70, 80%, as soon as you try and overpower it, that's where we make most of our errors. Tip number quattro is location over power, something I don't do very well. <laughs> or speak Spanish very well. <laughs> so one thing I always focus on is being able to hit every seam from every location. So if you're from the left side, left corner of the court, going down the line, going down the middle, and going cross court. From the middle to the left sideline, to the middle, to the right, and from the right, down the line, middle, and left. Obviously, you're gonna play in lots of different locations, there's different winds, so if there's a crosswind from right to left, you don't wanna be out of luck because you can only hit one serve. A seam is something that are on jeans. <laughs> what a seam is, a seam, if me and Case were playing on the same team, which will never happen ever, even no though we're roommates, no way. would be down the middle between us, down Case Beer's sideline, which gets ace all the time, and then down my sideline, which I get ace sometimes. <laughs> the most important thing is just serve the space. I can hit my hardest jump serve, but Madison will pass it all day if I hit it right to him. So if you make him take a step or two, left, right, forward, or back, then he's in trouble, hopefully. For the record, Madison butchered the drum footage. That's true. I'm pretty sure I hit a handful of serves from middle to left, right to left, down the left side of the seam, and they're not here. Bro, the drone, the drone ran out of battery, I forgot to charge him, so my bad. Rookie mistake. But he can hit them, I know. Occasionally. Or Riley knows. <laughs> <laughs> nice serve, Jeremy. So one thing that I try and do every single day of practice is target practice. It's not super complicated, but it does take a little bit of time. All you do is serve from left, middle, and right, and find each seam. You're always trying to serve the space, so you wanna make sure that no matter what the wind's doing, you can hit each player in each seam. All right, before we get to the fifth and final tip, and you're gonna wanna stay tuned to it, because I have a hard time doing it, and it's helped me out a lot. We want to say thank you to Kyla, one of Case Beer's sponsors. Cheers. This is a rad company. I found them uh, three years ago, and Love them ever since. They help support me and do what I love to do, play beach volleyball. So if you're looking for a hard kombucha, I actually hadn't had one before this night. And I, actually, I actually really like it. <laughs> it's my third one, and I don't think I'll stop drinking them tonight. <laughs> it is step five, have a routine. Are we doing steps or tips? Because we've kind of bounced back between those two. Yeah, that's not good. All right, <laughs> okay, ready. It's either step five or tip five. I forget what we've been saying, but it's the fifth one. And it's having a routine. So every time I go back to the line, I always uh, clear the sand. No one likes jumping out of holes and it just helps me have a visual of where I want to go. Uh, always trying to slow the game down a little bit because I pretty much jump serve every time and block, so that's a lot of running. And you always want to take like a breath. You want to be under control. You literally have a game in your hands. So the more focus, the more time you have, or at least for me, the better serve I can hit. You're always thinking about where you're trying to serve, which player, which seam, and visualizing the serve beforehand. That's a tip I picked up a few years back from The Inner Game of Tennis. Great book if you haven't read it. So it's important to have a routine so that you go through the same motion, same toss, same approach every single time. And I'm probably the slowest server on tour. Sometimes I'm watching my own film, it's kind of painful. I probably kill the momentum of a game for all the fans. I'm sorry but it's what helps me. It helps me just focus on my serve and hit the best serve I can. And I think sometimes like a lot of people put their routine only when they play in matches or in scrimmages. But like the one thing I've seen Case Beer do is like no matter what, not even for this video, he just, he always does his routine whenever he's practicing his serve, whenever in practice. And I think that's something that's very overlooked with players trying to get better at serving. So no matter where it is, what time, like, Figure out your routine. If it's breathing, if it's clearing the sand, if it's walking back, whatever that is, like do it every single time you serve, no matter what. And it can change too. It doesn't have to be the same thing. Like it's taken me, I don't know, 10 years to figure mine out. So play with it and see what feels right. Okay, the last cut, I guess I mumbled a lot, so we're redoing it. Shocking. But for all of you who stayed to watch the end of this video, to watch the five tips, tricks, or steps to jump serving the case viewers shared with us. Thank you for watching. 
and we'll see you next week. Huh? Cheers. Cheers. Let's go finish these.